yeah, let's just go ahead and get started then. Um, so yeah, so just a quick recap for Aaron. This format is totally new, so we're kind of winging it and see how this goes. We just kind of prepared a few uh, Python exercises just to kind of work through. And if this format, if people like this format, we can do this again with something else. Uh, could be something not Python, could be something else, whatever you might be working on. So uh, just to get started, just to show people how Repl.it uh, works. Yeah, so this is Repl.it and I can actually share this link so you guys can go right to it and type into it yourself if you would like. Um, if not, you can just watch on the screen share that totally works fine as well. Um, we've got these problems from a website called exorcism.io. They have these tracks for all these different languages, probably any language you'd like to learn, even assembly, if that's your thing. Um, but yeah, so we went into the Python track and exorcism's whole service is like they can, uh, you can sign up to have actual mentors go through your solutions and critique your solutions, stuff like that, if that's your thing. Uh, we're just using it just for the problems. And so we just kind of got an easy one, just like set us up on Repl.it. Uh, we kind of set this up last night, so kind of on spur of the moment kind of thing. Basically, they have a, like a tool in the terminal where you'll download all the code that they give you to get you started, and then you can submit it. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're All we did was we just copied the, they provide you unit tests, which is how you check your solution. Uh, so... Let me install this real quick. So I made it so that when I hit the run button, if it wants to come up soon, any second now, hit the run button, it'll actually run all the unit tests. And here there are four. Actually, we added this yesterday. We can probably take this out. There are, correction, three. Wow, that is kind of ugly. What if I make it smaller? <laughs> yeah, not the best output, but it works. Yeah, so we, we have three uh, unit tests. They're all failing right now because our code currently does absolutely nothing. So that's a good starting point, and we can check uh, our solution. So the first... So yeah, um, Alex, do you want to... Drive the solution hmm. and tell me how we how we're gonna solve this. Um, sure. So actually, looking let's read at the problem real quick. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably the best way to start. So it says, so it introduces the problem and it says two for or a two dash for is short for two for one, <clears throat> one for you and one for me, and it says given a name, return a string with a message one for X and one for me, where X is the given name. However, if the name is missing, return the string one for you, one for me. And then they give some examples. So if the name is Alice, it would return one for Alice, one for me. If the name was Bob, it would return one for Bob, one for me. But if there is no name given, then it would return one for you, one for me. Um, yeah. It's saying that it might be possible to raise exceptions. I don't think, uh, we'll I don't need think we need to do to that here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll leave that out. Yeah. And so, so can I split this? I can't split this because uh eh, well, let's see what happens if I split it. I think I'm only sharing one screen. So Oh yeah. What do you guys see now? I just see a smaller Repelit window. Let me just share the whole window then or the whole screen. Should be fine. Let me go ahead and change this to be stacked. Yes. I think that works. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So we can start. So I guess if we read our tests, we can see test that 
a name is given. This is a mm -hmm. bit harder to read the test now, so let's clear that. Um, so yeah, the first thing that fails is that twofer takes zero positional arguments, but one was given. So we got to yeah. make it taken. So in Python, you, you define a function by starting with the keyword DEF, which I think stands for define, but I'm not sure. Probably. But um, it's a keyword that signifies you're going to write a function. Um, a function in Python is just like almost a, fun a function name, and Python is almost like mm -hmm. any function name in other languages. You have to, I think, start with a letter, uh, and then you can use alphanumeric characters and an underscore to, to use as names. You can't use keyword names, so if there's a keyword in the language, you can't use that. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. It does stand for define. Um, and so here we have what, what this statement is saying in line one is saying that we have a, we're defining a function called to underscore for, uh, the parentheses, um, is a place where you could put parameters if the function yep. takes any parameters and our first, um, error message is saying that the, our test suite, um, is attempting to use the function and giving it a parameter but the definition of the function doesn't have one. So that first test is this one here. Yep. Uh, sorry, name no, not given. The, one. the Alice one, right? The one that, it doesn't show up in the same order that it's in the it test doesn't. file. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess it yeah. doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. But essentially either the second or the third test in mm -hmm. that test suite, is passing in a parameter uh, to the function. But if we go back to our definition, we don't have one. Yeah. How do so, you pass stuff in? Yeah. Just call so it Python, something. You just, yeah, you just create a variable name. Oh. Or uh, in this case, it'd be a parameter name. So and it has it. the same rule, the same rules apply as variable names uh, for naming parameters. So theoretically, we should be able to do that, and it'll do yeah. something. Do I get to see output in here when I run the tests? Oh, yeah. So it does show when it calls it with Alice, it does print out with Alice. I think if I say output, it should be easier to see. Something like that. Yeah. You can see output was Bob. Oh yeah, it says captured standard out call. Cool, that's pretty helpful. So are we still failing? So we're failing that that's saying that when it passes in a name, it should return that string with the name. Yeah. So instead of printing, we can just return uh that string. Yeah, in Python, like a lot of C-like languages, um, you can the fun your functions can return something with a keyword returns. Um, there are some languages where, if you don't use the keyword return, it would return the last expression in mm. in the function. But that, those are kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's like not. Weird. Yeah, let's not deal with that today. Yeah. So yeah, if you just want to return something from a Python function, you just use the. Uh, yep. Uh, Aaron, return. you can totally start typing yeah. in here if you feel like it. You can jump in there at any time. <laughs> um. Yeah. So theoretically, this should match at least one of those tests, if not two, two of them. Mm. We got two right and one wrong. So the one wrong that's left is. Assertion error, then. Wait, what? Oh, yes. Is... Remember, part of the uh, specification for this was that if no parameter name was given, then. Um... It returns one for you, one for me. Ah, yep. Gotcha. So this one's calling it with no arguments. So how can we make this optional, I guess? Yeah. 
Well, one quick thing that we can do to kind of clean this up is to format it. So instead of having this break here, mm -hmm. you can put a empty bracket here. And then at the end of the string, put format name. Yep. Mm -hmm. And what it will do is it will automatically fill this bracket with the argument here. And you can do that for multiple arguments. So you could have um, name, age, occupation, and have three brackets, and then have format, name, age, occupation. Nice. Gotcha. Oh, we have Are someone you, else joining. Dot format um, was, and it still is, one of one of the ways to do that. The new way is uh, called f strings, mm -hmm. which work pretty similar to dot format. Um, what you would do with f strings is you would preface any Python string with the the f character, and then um, any variables that are in scope you would put inside the bracket, and you would get the same effect. And <clears throat> you can also format those like uh, variables. Yep. That would be mm. another way of doing that. Yeah. Um, and you were asking how to handle if no argument was given. Uh, we might be able to do that with a try except clause. Okay. What does that look like? So it's like an if then statement, but if uh, if then statements don't handle errors. Mm -hmm. So if not putting in the positional argument throws an error then it will default to the except. So can, do I put a try here? Yes. Let's see if name is none. Well, no, the try here would, um, you would create the, the try statement here, indent this, and then you would have the except clause, mm -hmm. um, which if was a null, it would return uh, return one for you, one for me. Yeah. So like that. Return this. Nope. I guess there's some. Yeah, I guess there's some over the air lag. Yeah. <laughs> If multiple people are editing at the same time, I think we get a little bit of lag, but cool. That's what I get for trying to help. Oh. So I guess it's throwing a type error, so it's not letting me actually call twofer without an argument this yeah. way. Because it's not in the definition. So I think what we discovered, I think Chris, what you were saying yesterday was that we can give it name a default value. Ah. Uh, so is that up here, I think? Yeah, and if we maybe give it a default value of you, right. yeah, we could definitely do that. I think that should probably pass it. Yeah. No. Hey. So that's one way of getting around that. I think the other way we could also, I mean, we could have done empty string, but then we would have had to test for empty string. So mm -hmm. I think this, in this case, uh, just giving it you seems to be the the best way of handling it because it you is already like the default. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's so that kind of the gist one. of how Repelit and uh PyTest works. A quick intro to both of those. Um any questions before we move on? Uh so let's pull up the next one. It's a little bit more involved. So here's the link for this one if you want to hop in and type and highlight stuff. Otherwise, watching from here is perfectly fine as well. I'm going to install PyTest Sugar because the default test output is very ugly. What does that do, actually? Hmm? Just formats this, the output? Yeah, it or... just makes it look nicer. Nice. With those little check marks and stuff, uh, the default does not have that. Uh, oh, okay. Which yeah, is it does look not a lot fun better. at all. So, uh, for this one, go back over here and a gram. 
that's this one over here. Uh, so hmm. let me just move this over here. Yeah. Uh, let's open this. If you run the test, we'll see that there's a lot of them, uh, which we actually didn't even define our thing because I didn't set this up right. There we go. Cool. So we have 14 tests in total this time. A lot, but we'll just yeah. go through one by one, see how far we get. Um, so for this one, uh, for people who aren't familiar with anagrams, an anagram is a word that contains all of the letters of a different word. So for instance, in here, the word listen and the word inlets is an anagram because you can take all the letters and listen and rearrange it. Uh, in this case, Google. Google does uses L and E, but none of the, the rest. Um, yeah. And strictly, it is a rearrangement. So the same word will not be a anagram. It is just the same word. Mm -hmm. um, so in this case, if we take a look at the test, we can see what it kind of expects. Um, so they call fine anagrams with some input word and some array of candidates. So given one word, find a list of all the uh, anagrams within mm -hmm. that candidates list. And if there are none, we can return a empty array. So, um, do you have some thoughts on how to start this or anyone else? Um, I would just say we first need input, right? Yeah. So we can so, define those inputs. So we can say our input. Is that what I want to call it? Um, input. What were they calling it? Let's see. They called it. Um, they had candidates and they had uh... candidates and nothing because they put it right in there. Okay. We so can maybe call that candidates. Yeah. So the first one's going to be a string. Can we? And we can. It, in Python, you can do optional typing. So if you put a. Do you want to do that? One... Oh, yeah, sure. I forgot <laughs> that I have that ability. Uh, it'd be colon and then the type that you expect. Gotcha. Um, and for candidates, we expect a list. So I'm going to. Can you specify say, hey, what kind or what type of list? You can, but it, it's a little bit more involved. You have to, I think, uh, import from the typing module. Oh, really? And you can't just yeah. do like angle bracket string kind of thing? No, it's a little more involved. Oh, that is <laughs> but unfortunate. Then, well, in Python, you can have lists that contain anything, right? So oh, that's true. Yeah, you're not strictly. You're not restricted uh, in what your list can have. So yep. it's, I think it's both a good thing oh. and a bad thing. Yeah. yeah. So I would say. We can put in some comments one... and see like what are like our different steps that we want to do. Oh, okay. Yeah, for sure. So one thing you mentioned is like it's a word that has to have all the same word or letters. Mm hmm in common with the other word, right? Yeah. So I would say one quick test we could do is just compare words by their length. Okay. And if they don't have the same length, we don't even bother comparing them um, against each other to see if they're anagrams because yeah. they're not going to be anyway, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's one thing. Um, the other thing I was thinking about is you were saying like an anagram is not itself. So that's true. We can compare the string. Once we compare their lengths and they are matching, we should compare the strings and just compare the string well. first. Probably that's probably. Yeah. Cause Python gives you a good quality on that. I think. Ram. And then so if they meet those two conditions, then we need to count all the characters in both. Uh, characters. 
the candidate and, and the input and yeah. candidate. There's actually a slightly different way that you could go about that, mm. which is turn both of the strings into lists with individual characters, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. sort both strings mm -hmm. and compare or sort both lists and compare the lists. Yeah, that is interesting. Because that'll can... immediately compare every potential part in step three together. Yep. And yep. they would have to match exactly. Um, presuming that we're not worried about um, case sensitive letters here. Right. Uh, so if we look at the test, that's a good question. Um, we can see if they do anything like that. So they, so it's not case sensitive. So with lowercase nose and with mm. various case, it doesn't care. So I think then if it doesn't care, what we're going to have to do is make all our candidates and our inputs the same case. Make so, all candidates make and I would input say any input and as well, right? candidates all, all lowercase. Why not? Yeah. I think lowercase is probably the, the way to go. Yep. Um, so we could do that. We could do these steps and what Aaron here mentioned. we're actually finding out yeah so we so we can actually explore both of those I think and it'd be nice to actually talk about the pros and cons of each so we can yeah um and turn. there's actually another way <laughs> there are many ways to uh, do it yeah so candidate yeah. to turn both to charles sort and compare yep and if we wanted a third option to step three mm -hmm. we could import a special collection um, class called counter and turn both the input and the candidate mm -hmm. into counter objects and then compare the objects to each other let's see use counters cool and i guess the final step would be to uh a build list of all matching of all anagrams. Mm. So what it seems like is we could probably pull like steps one through three to find mm -hmm. anagrams of a single pair of strings uh, and then loop through the candidate list using that little helper function, it seems, yeah. right? Yeah, I would say once you get more than like two or three steps, it'd be nice to yeah. put that into a small so helper function. We can make a helper function called is anagram. Uh, and we compare two strings. String one, string two. Does anyone have any better <laughs> suggestions for the parameter to names? If not, we can just keep them that way. Um. You can type you can say source and target that sure. decent we're not putting stuff anywhere or anything but why not yeah <laughs> um, i mean i always i always find myself to be completely unimaginative when it comes mm -hmm. to the parameter names those just all this yeah parameter names are Naming stuff in general is hard. Yeah, naming is difficult, especially cool. when that name is going to be used forever. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess um, we can start with just uh, filling this bit out of how to, you know, just find a single anagram. So we said mm -hmm. step one, we compare the strings. So yeah, if in terms of length, right? Oh no, you're right. In terms of equality, so yeah. If source and target are equal, then we can just return false? Um, yes. With capital F, yeah. Yep. Okay, that was easy. Next. Uh, compare the lengths. How do, compare the le how do you get the length of a string? Uh, it's L-E-N parentheses ah, thing. Yeah. This. So in, in Python, uh, as opposed to something like Java, Mm -hmm. the there's a global function called len mm -hmm. um which will give you the length of certain objects 
um, that subscribe to that gotcha. API. Uh, strings in Python subscribe to that. Lists subscribe to that. I believe dictionaries mm -hmm. subscribe to that. So that's why we're able to pass a string into the len function and, oh. and get a, a value out. Can we give this a return type? We can. Uh, it would not be like that. It would be um, dash, or sorry, hyphen, and then greater. Or, yeah, exactly. Is it lowercase bool? Like that? Yep. I don't know that it's very helpful, but <laughs> yeah, I haven't done the typing stuff in Python. It can be nice, uh, especially in VS Code. So can I say like if not that? Does that work? No. Did yeah. Do if that? if does not equal is proper. Like that. <laughs> uh. Although I meant I want the way the, that you've uh, written it before. I want the, yeah. I want the Python way. You know, you got to write English. Yeah. <laughs> That's what all the people say. All right. Cool. Um. So. So this is the most manual three. way, and. Do we do we have a favorite? This um, one, this one is. Uh, we looked at this yesterday. This is like two lines, so we can yeah. save that for last. Yeah, let's do. How about we do? We can probably 3B. do all of them. Yeah, let's start with three B. Since it seems to be easy enough in Python. Um, yeah, three A would be something I would do in C or something like that. We're we'll turning both to lists, right? So we do a source list is, I just say list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can give um, a list, I guess you could call it a constructor, <laughs> mm -hmm. a string, and it'll turn it into characters, a list of characters. Yeah. yeah. So we'll turn both of these, and I guess each of these are just the individual characters in a list array. Yes. And so we say if they're equal, oh, well, we have to sort. Well, you need to first. sort them first. How do we sort? There's actually an argument that you can use that's just sort. Yes. Argument. Similar to length. Ah, I see. Um, well, I guess no. This, no, oh, it, I... it's a property of um, the list. Could I, could I just do it here? I... No. You would have to say dot sort, right? Dot sort. But in Python, there's two sorts. There's the list sort, and then there's the global sorted function. Ah, I see. So you could use either one, I guess. Um, I tend to use sorted often. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would probably do uh, dot sort tuple. Dot sort tuple? Well, open parenthesis, close parenthesis. Ah. Uh, uh, like a... Uh... Yeah. Well... You don't have to type tuple. It's that's what I always called the oh. empty brackets. <laughs> They're empty parentheses. Oh, you call that tuple. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, in Python, there's this object or yeah called tuple, and it is sort of like a pair of. It doesn't have to be a pair. It could be any number of things, but the object is described no. as open to close parentheses with a comma at the end. Mm. That's what defines it as a tuple. Um, you have to put that comma yeah. there. Otherwise, it's just a grouping of an expression or something like that. That's what's interesting. Uh, that REPL isn't giving me autocomplete stuff. The language okay. server is being weird. Yeah. Normally, they should have autocompleted it for me, but oh well. So if the sorted target and source list is the same, mm. it would be true. True. I guess in this case, we would do else return false. So we could actually probably just do uh, turn that. Yeah. Yeah, so that's 3B. So we'll just go with this for now. We can go back and re-implement these in a sec. So let's assume we're going with this. Mm -hmm. So now we can go up here. I just got an idea too. Yeah. I don't know if it'll work, but we could use filter. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yep. Apply that is anagram function to the list yep. with the filter. You can, and then you can tell me how to do that. 
first. Let's uh, make them all lowercase according yeah. to our thing. So you can just override input with input to. Uh, it's just lower. Dot lower. Uh, mm -hmm. like that. So strings in Python have that uh, lower mm. function. Can we do like the list comprehension thing to turn candidates? Oh yeah, that'd be nice. Um, you could say x dot lower or x dot lower for x and x in candidates. candidates. That'll do it. Yeah. Um, I really wish that this stuff was working. Well, let me copy this real quick and like refresh it and see if it works better afterwards. Could be that there's multiple. I wonder Maybe. if it's multiple people in the yeah, thing. Yeah, I wonder if it's freaking out. Oh. Oh, well. Oh, well. Yep. Okay. Oh. Okay. So now we're comparing apples to apples. Everything's lowercase. Um, you know what? We could also ac actually just... Uh... Can I say find anagrams? A and some list of capital B. Hmm. Oh, we're in Bash? Are we not in Python? Thought we're in Python. It's I Bash, find. I guess. <laughs> now we're in Python. Yep. How can you start it hmm? with the, uh, is there a way to call Python 3, but then like make it interactive when you run a file? Um, Things like that. You think, yeah, dash C, I think. And you can run an expression. Oh, now oh, we're in Python just... still. Oh, you just want to run a file. Then you just do Python 3 and then the name of the file. Dash C. With no dash C, sorry. No dash C. Yep. Main is not defined. Oh, well. oh, I was well. trying something else, but we can leave it. Um, anyway, I was just gonna see if we could like just like print input. See what we have. And print candidates. Yeah, we've done a lot of work without seeing what we've actually done, mm. and we can actually just do that going over here, and uh, removing that. Run isn't configured. Oh, okay, fine. Python 3 main.py. So it should run something. Did it actually run anything? Um, doesn't look like it. Well, it ran, but we have to tell it to actually run this. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Hey, we defined it's the working function, now. But... Look at that. We... Yeah, we defined the function, but we didn't actually run it. So we have some random uppercase and lowercase stuff and BAC. So those should technically be anagrams. Cool. So they are all lowercase now. Nice. Yep, I'll pull this over. We don't need that. Um cool. So we can go through and find all the anagrams, I guess. So what is you said something about filter, so how would we filter? So there's a global filter function in Python. Mm -hmm. And it takes a function and a sequence. Function and a sequence. And it will apply that function to every element in the sequence. The only issue that I see already is mm -hmm. um, our function takes two parameters. Yeah. And so here's where we would kind of have to create a function that has the built-in parameter that we already got from the input and then apply to everything in the sequence. Okay. Kind of so like a higher order function. How would so I don't do know that? if we want to do that. I mean, we can, right? We already know one of them, right? With Because input is always the same. Mm -hmm. so how would we do that? Um, so we would have to turn is anagram. We'd have to find another function um, with input or something and that returns a function two. with one of the parameters already kind of baked in is anagram input 
I see. And we pass in. And like that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So then we filter on is anagram two. And the list that we're going over. Yep. I'm wondering if this is going to work. <laughs> so it's passing theoretically. It should go through candidates and pass it into the single argument that it takes. Yes. And if it returns true, it'll keep it. If it's false, it, it'll discard. Yeah. What it should return is a, a list. We should be able to um, print it and see what happens. Don't need pass anymore. Uh, yeah. Let's see what we got. Uh, we need list. Yeah. No. I can't. I can't list what is it. it saying? His anagram is not Name. defined because I have to put this afterwards, probably. Yeah. Yeah. There's no hoisting here. No. Hey, look at that! It returns both of them. Although, uh, we do need the original ones, right? If we're going to return them, it'll want oh, the original. We can't just straight up modify them here. True, true, true. So we should probably do the this bit uh, in our is anagram up here. Right. Yep. Target. Target. Well, and the other thing that you could do, uh, if you wanted to keep the uh, original inputs, but the, if you wanted the output to have the original mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. input, you could rename the variables inside the function so that that way you don't actually change anything when it goes to return. Well, with, with Python, though, um, and a lot of other languages just assigning to a new variable if it's a reference object is not going to help you um it would still mutate whatever we passed in so we may need to make a deep copy or something hmm. why is it not running did i break something no mm -hmm. oh, there you go oh there it is Cool. So theoretically, this should work. Instead of printing it, we can just return it, and that should let us run it through our test suite. And we'll see how far we get. Uh, so instead of this, we can go back to PyTest. We hit run. Hey, look at that. All of them passed. Wow. First try. That's pretty cool. I honestly didn't think that was going to work because <laughs> I've had to do like that higher order function stuff before and it's yeah. super, super annoying. I'd like to see what the actual counter one works. Did you oh, no. explain how that one works? Yeah. So there's an object <sighs> or a class in the Python collections mm. module called counter. And what it does is it counts things for better lack of uh, a word, but basically you can give it, I think almost any iterable, I want to say, and it'll count like that? the occurrences. Yeah, like oh, that. It's just saying it's, you're not using it. Um, so we can say uh, source count Like that, just pass it in. Yep, yep, just pass it in. Um, Target count. Yep, we can, and then you just compare those two things together. Source count is equal to target count, and they are different objects, so there's an implicit equality happening here. Hmm. That I assume not that's, by... that's a like a implementation detail if you write stuff yourself, yeah, like those underscore methods in your class yeah the dunder the dunder methods mm. in that class um, hey, allow you to to hook into and yeah. then look at that two lines right <laughs> yeah. uh, which is nice 
So yeah, yeah knowing I guess some some of these data structures. Yeah. And Step A would be them. this, but doing the actual work of the counter class yourself. Yeah. Uh, which I, I guess is not very interesting to do right now. We can leave that up. Yeah. Step yeah three A would have been I I would have I would think like what I think we tried this yesterday, Chris. It was like a dictionary. Yep. Iterate through every character. If we've already seen it, add to it. If we haven't seen it, add it to the dictionary with a value of one. And then so, compare dictionary. Interesting. So if we look at these, um, they talk about like the trade offs of each one. These ones will, I guess in this case, they both take up some amount of space, extra space. But when you sort the list, um, your most efficient sort will end up being uh, O of n log n. Or the most efficient sort because of math. Mm. I don't math remember the stuff. proof of why that is, but it is the way it is. Uh, whereas counter uses a dictionary uh, or a hash map, which would be linear time, uh, and that would be O of n. So that's linear time versus uh, whatever that one is called. I don't remember. It's not quite oh, exponential, you... but. Oh, yeah. Logarithmic time. Well, logarithmic would be log n, which is less than n. Oh, but right. n log oh, n yeah. is. It's like somewhere in between, right? <laughs> right. It's yeah. it's worse than linear, but not quite n squared, which is what you don't want. Yeah. So in these cases, you're doing it twice. So that would be 2n here and 2n log n, which you can generalize as that. And so if you have a very big list, um, you end up sorting for longer. But if you have a big counter, you end up taking up more space and memory. True. So yeah. you trade off something in each case. And that's really just depending on which one you want to trade. Yeah, and you're it's... always trading <laughs> speed or um, t uh, space. You can have both, then you can go write a paper and get lots of government and university funding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. This one's actually a lot shorter than I thought it would be. Yeah, I thought it would take a little bit longer. Yeah. But... This is a little bit funky, but. Oh, the. Um, yeah, having uh, to fun... make having to make the separate uh, filter thing for that. Uh, like a higher order function, right? Yeah, to so you, freeze the candidate. So How would you do that in JavaScript? Um, because I I would I think it would be the same thing. Let's see, in the JavaScript filtering, uh, you would have your candidates, and for each candidate, then you would do whatever is in here. Mm-hmm. Which in this case, I guess it would be, yeah, if you want to implicitly pass it in, which you could, uh, you can do that. Otherwise, you can return is anagram of uh, input and candidate. And input would just have to be in scope, right? Right. And it would in this case because it's right there. Yeah. Because of closures or something. Yeah. I've heard of these things. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's pretty funky. I like that. Um, yeah. I think there might be a way around that. Um, it's just in the interest yeah, of That makes sense, time. though. Like, it, otherwise, I wouldn't know what argument goes where. Yeah. 